Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Ancient Path Remnant. I hope you're doing well. Have you heard of this doomsday clock? Just recently it was reset. So the doomsday clock is a symbolic timepiece showing how close the world is to ending. Midnight marks the theoretical point of annihilation. So I'm reading an article that I'll link for you if you want to check it out. But so atomic scientists reset this clock recently to 90 seconds to midnight, closer than it's ever been before to the threat of annihilation. Satan knows his time is short, evidently. So apocalyptic threats could arise from political tensions, weapons, technology, climate change, as they suggest, or pandemic illness. Okay, so this is what they're suggesting. The hands of the clock are moved closer to or further away from midnight based on the scientist's reading of existential threats at a particular time. What I find interesting is this midnight hour. There are several things in scripture that talk about the midnight hour. It doesn't mean exactly at midnight. It means, you know, during the nighttime hours, um, you know, and so we're always told to keep watch and you know, warning of things to come. You never know when the thief is going to come try to kill, steal, and destroy. And so we truly need to be prepared, spiritually prepared. We understand that we're not fighting a fleshly battle here. It's a spiritual war, you know, and I've said it many times. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual forces of wickedness. And Yahuwah is raising up a people to understand how to fight the spiritual battle because we know how the story ends. But anyway, continuing with this clock. So basically, it updates, they update the time on this clock. And like I said, it's 90 seconds to midnight, which is the closest it's ever been. So it was created in 1947 by a group of atomic scientists, including Albert Einstein, who had worked on the Manhattan Project. So anyway, it's like I said, now closest to midnight. And if you look into scriptures about the midnight hour, um, it's very telling of what Yahuwah plans to do, bringing judgment on this earth. So when they suggest that there's this, you know, apocalypse and that the world is doomed to end, well, Satan knows his time is short. But Yahuwah's people understand a different concept because... There's a lot of promises in scripture for Yahuwah's people. There's a lot of hope. There's a lot of, you know, just incredible things that Yahuwah tells us and how he'll protect us. And when we're walking in that relationship with him, when we've agreed to his covenant commands, his, you know, these instructions for our life, he has this protection and covering for us. So I want to talk a little bit about that. The greatest insurance you can have at this point in time the greatest thing you can be doing is you know making sure that you're right with Yahuwah through his son um, let's take a look at the word apocalypto so right now we understand that the bride of Messiah is having the veil lifted from her eyes that doesn't mean just women it means men and women but the bride representing those who are united to our Messiah, you know, he is the, the vine and we are the branches. And so just as Adam and Hawa, Adam and Eve, how Adam, a rib was taken from him. And I've mentioned this before, that it was part of his DNA, a, a piece of the fabric of his being. And so part of his DNA was taken to bring forth Hawa bring forth Eve and just in the same way that our Messiah's blood is you know the master strand for us he is the vine and we are the branches and so part of his DNA is given to us so that we can replicate that and be united to him in the nefesh just like a man and woman who are married get united just like Adam and Hawa were united as one you know, a man and woman come together and become one flesh. Well, our Messiah, with our Messiah, we become one in nefesh, in the spirit. And so the bride of Messiah is united in nefesh through his blood, which is such a powerful thing. 
and the veil is being lifted off of the bride's eyes so she can truly see, meaning men and women can truly see what's being revealed right now. So when we look at the word apocalypto, apocalypto, um, it means to uncover, to reveal, and to bring to light. So things are being revealed, things are being brought to light to uncover, revealing what's hidden, something that's veiled or obstructed to make it now known, the inner makeup to make it plain and manifest, particularly what is immaterial and invisible to be brought to light. So Yahuwah is revealing things that we haven't known or seen before. We haven't understood. Revelation is coming to light. We're understanding more about his purpose and his plan. We're also understanding more about our identity in him and how, how we are part of his house, how we, you know, our identity is being restored to us. Some more definition on apocalypto is the appearing, coming, manifestation, revelation, disclosure, you know, lighten, coming, manifestation, to be revealed, revelation. So what they're calling actual annihilation is very different from what we see. It clearly is the annihilation of wickedness. So that time is, you know, short. The evil has a short time on this earth to finish their plans. And then Yahuwah is going to come in and cleanse this earth and shake it up and, you know, refine and burn it by fire. And so whatever he has to do to cleanse this earth, he's going to do. But we have to be a people who understand his plan, his purpose. So I want to read to you about the wise men who build their houses upon the rock. How important it is to understand to have the covering of our Messiah. So if we're in the days of Noah, and just as in the days of Noah, you know, it's just a repeat of the same thing, except... This time it's not a flood of water, it's a flood of lies, a flood of deception. And the only way that we can be, you know, um, saved from being flooded in the lies of deception is not to, you know, be under the strong delusion, is to have that seal. So the atoning blood of our Messiah is the pitch, the kafar. So like in Noah's Ark, he had to seal his boat with tar and to make it waterproof. And so we have to be sealed with the Ruach HaKodesh and we have to be covered by the blood of our Messiah, this atonement, this pitch. And we have to repent and be forgiven and, you know, be born from above so that we are sealed by the Ruach HaKodesh. And so that the Ruach HaKodesh teaches us so much. And helps us not to be led into the strong delusion that will, you know, it's a deluge of delusion that can drown us in the flood of lies. Because there are so many lies, it's, we, it would be almost impossible to know what's truth on this earth because it just about everything we've been told is a lie. So we have to build our Noah's Ark, which is, you know, again, wise men build their house upon the rock. It's all the same thing. The wise virgins, um, you know, having their their extra oil and their lamps continually continually lit. So it's just wise to be prepared in this time because this is the season we're in. Serious times. So let's read some of these scriptures and talk a little bit more about how to be prepared for the days ahead. So beware of false prophets. We're in Matthew, Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. So if we're walking in obedience to Yahuwah and we're in, you know, relationship, we're obeying the commandments and growing in the Torah and spirit and truth, then as spiritually mature people walking in obedience, we should bear forth good fruit. That is the sign and symbol of a spiritually mature person who can bring forward truth in a spirit in a mature spiritual way in a fruitful way so you will recognize them by their fruits are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles likewise every good tree bears good fruit 
but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, by their fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father in the heavens. So the will of our Father is for us to obey his instructions, his commandments, his Torah, and to grow in that understanding in spirit and truth. And many will say to me on that day, Master, Master, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. Then I will plainly say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So you see lawlessness. It's, there's either obedience or lawlessness. There's either, you know, Yahuwah's way or the world's way. And so I've said this many times. It's the world is do as thou wilt, the satanic doctrine or Yahuwah's will, which is obedience to his instructions, his commandments. And growing in the Torah. Continuing, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them is like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. The rain fell, the torrents raged, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because its foundation was on the rock. All right, so let's look at this. The rock, the foundation, is the Torah. Our Messiah is the chief cornerstone. And we must be grafted in and born from above by the Ruach HaKodesh. So we have to have the seal of the Ruach HaKodesh. So we are, you know, we have that atoning blood and the covering of our Messiah. And we have the Ruach HaKodesh to teach us the truth of the word as we press into the word. If we don't do this, you see that when storms come, when these floods come, these trials and temptations and testings and this refinement and this fire comes on this earth, and when it comes to our own house, are we able to stand through it? Are we able to have our belief in our Father, in Yahuwah, to deliver us by his ar right arm, his right hand man, our Messiah, through our Messiah? So what is our belief? And will we, well, that's why our Messiah said, will he find belief on this earth? Because when things get really shaken up, he's, he's going to have to shake up the nations. He's going to have to shake it in order to shake and see what will remain. You know, everything that can be shaken will be shaken, but only those things which cannot be shaken will be will remain. That's why this foundation is so important. Building this relationship, growing in this in this walk of understanding and being willing to change when he shows us what we need to change in our lives, being willing to continually every day repent and confess our sins and turn away from them as we, you know, recognize those things being covered, covered in the pitch, the atoning, the kafar, you know, we're building this house to be strong, to not to be impenetrable. And not, you know, worried about what's going on in the world other than to know that it's happening. But not fear like everyone else because he did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. So there's no fear in walking with our father and his son and being filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. Because it's not his spirit that gives us fear. So we really have to put off all those things. We have to really let him remove those things from us. And we have to surrender those things and resist the devil. You know, submit to Yahuwah, resist the devil, and he will flee. Continuing on this, But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the torrents raged, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its collapse. Because there's no foundation, there's nothing to stand on, there's no relationship, there's no agreement that this person, this unwise person, you know, it's the foolish virgins, it's, they're not building their house on truth. They're building their house on lawlessness, and it won't stand. So when all this shaking's going to come, their house will fall. So you want to protect your house. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, 
But first of all, let me read. This is this. Yahuwah keeps impressing Malachi on me. And it just keeps coming back and keep com keeps coming back. So I'm going to read it again because I'll probably read it many more times to you in the future. So Malachi 4. And in fact, there's more. Uh, Malachi 3 is important as well, but today we'll focus on 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, when all the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. The day is coming when I will set them ablaze, says Yahuwah of hosts. Not a root or branch will be left to them. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you will go out and leap like calves from the stall. Then you will trample the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day I am preparing, says Yahuwah of hosts. Remember the Torah of my servant Moshe, the statutes and ordinances I commanded him for all of Yasharel at Horeb. Behold, I will send you Eliyahu the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of Yahuwah, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their father fathers otherwise I will come and strike the land with a curse so this is why this prophecy is so vital right now because if a man in the house if you think about when a thief comes a thief comes at night in the dark usually usually they come at the cover of darkness the midnight hour right somewhere after midnight so does this do the spiritual attacks oftentimes they come when we're sleeping that's why this i'm gonna what i tell you in a minute is so important but typically a man would be the one if a thief comes to rob the house the man would be the one to protect if he had a wife and children you know 99.99 percent of the time if not 100 percent of the time it would be the man who would go and fight the thief well spiritually speaking it's the same thing a man should be covering his family in prayers to close spiritual doors and windows and lock them at night as well as a woman has to do the same thing because if she's coming back behind her husband and unlocking windows and doors behind and he's locked them and now she's unlocking them it leaves those windows and doors open for spiritual attack. The enemy can just come right in. So both people, men and women, or if there's just a man in the house and that's it, or just a woman in the house, then, you know, Messiah is your covering. And these prayers are so vital to locking spiritual doors. This is why you have to have a house built on the foundation, the rock, and you have to be covered and you have to do the prayers and understand why these are so important for the days ahead. Whether you're married, single, whatever, woman, man, you have to be covered. Someone has to be the covering in the house to cover and lock these spiritual doors and windows so the thief can't just come in and plunder your house. So let me talk a little bit more about that in just a minute, but I'm going to read to you some things I've written here. So Yahuwah is raising up a kingdom of priests who will be able to move his hand on this earth. So let's read actually um, in Hazon, in Revelation. Let's see. All right. First of all, he's going to seal his servants, but the servants that he's going to seal are his priests. And so in Hazon 1, Revelation 1 and somewhere around verse six so to him who loves us and has revealed oh, released us from our sins by his blood by mashiach's blood who has made us to be a kingdom of priests unto yahuwah the father to him be esteem and honor and power forever and ever so see he's made his people a kingdom of priests those who are you know, have clean hands and pure hearts before him. So if you're a kingdom of priests, you have to understand how, how, if our bodies are the temple, how do you offer those offerings and sacrifices? How do you do that temple service every day? And then in that regard, this is spiritual warfare where you're locking doors and windows at, during the day and at night to make sure that you're closing doors to spiritual attacks. Doesn't mean Yahuwah won't refine you. Doesn't mean 
that Yahuwah won't be cleansing, you know, the dead works out of us and removing the leaven from us and removing pride and arrogance and hypocrisy and things like that. But in terms of spiritual attacks that, you know, are from the enemy, we need to lock those doors. We need to make sure we're not opening doors to things that shouldn't be open and we're obeying Yahuwah in every way so that he protects us and all he needs to do is just prune off things of us that are no longer working you know like dead dead works and we continually lay those down so that we can have those pruned off and we can be more fruitful for his kingdom so we see that he's raising up a kingdom of priests under the order of Melchizedek our high priest Hamashiach Everyone, every single person has to be grafted into Messiah and has to be born from above by the Ruach HaKodesh and continually wash in the water of the word. So we're going to understand how the priestly office works a little bit more from what I've been shown. I can't say that I know, you know, I don't know everything about it, but I do know spiritually how it operates. So I want to show you a little bit, but... So if Yahuwah is raising up a kingdom of priests, and this is men and women who, because men and women both have to be responsible for their thoughts, for their words, for their actions, for their deeds. They both have to be responsible for their obedience and, you know, not transgressing the Torah. They, they have to be responsible for their own repenting, their own forgiveness, their own, you know, covering. But the husband in the house, if there is a husband, um, he has to be the spiritual covering for his family. Just like if a thief comes at night, he would be the one to go and fight this um, thief. So if a man isn't taking his priestly calling over the home, then he's leaving his house uncovered unless the woman has to raise up and be the covering for the house. And so once you get the order correct, then, you know, a house can stand. It's not unequally yoked. It can stand firm and established. So we have to be praying for, you know, Yahuwah to restore homes, marriages, and families. And if people are single, that, that those people know how to, you know, be, how to do these prayers so that they're covering themselves in the blood of Messiah. Messiah is the covering and then Yahuwah is the covering over that so that you're under that protection, that secret place. So these priests will be able to move the hand of Yahuwah on this earth. And as the days become darker, these people, their light will become even brighter. They'll shine even brighter. And of course, those with clean hands and pure hearts are the ones who can stand in his presence. This is the secret place. This is on top of the mountain, as I've said before. This is, um, you know, that that throne room. This is the, the protection. This is where you want to be when you pray for other people so that he hears you. You've got to cleanse. You've got to do a cleansing to get into his presence. And this is why I think a lot of people, you know, they don't do this temple service, this cleansing themselves before they try to go into his presence and um you know that's a serious thing and he's he doesn't listen to prayers when people don't repent and forgive he's not listening to those prayers we have to cleanse ourselves like the priests had to and they had to put on clean linens and the you know the clean linens represent the righteousness of our our deeds and our actions our thoughts so it's our righteousness so white linen represents righteousness so as priests under Yahuwah because it's a spiritual priesthood under Melchizedek you know it's these he's raising up these people by the power of his Ruach HaKodesh the prayers you know the priests had to do prayers or you know temple service morning and evening so prayer should be done first thing in the morning to cover the day and it, in the evening to cover the night. And if people neglect to do those, you know, that minimum, because we saw Daniel, Daniel, he prayed three times a day and you're supposed to stay in fellowship with you all day. So do not neglect your priestly service morning and evening. And, you know, our bodies are the temple. So you have to keep that menorah lit within like the wise virgins. And if we sleep and slumber in this hour, 
not doing our prayers, not connecting with Yahuwah, not building our spiritual ark, you know, our house with him. And, you know, if we leave those spiritual doors and windows open for the thief, you know, we're just like an open sign, come on in to the thief to come and plunder our house. We don't want to make it easy for the enemy to attack us. If, if there is, you know, a person, if people are married and there's one person, the husband or the wife aren't walking in the way, the other person needs to be the covering, whether man or woman. But you see by this Eliyahu prophecy of the hearts of the fathers are to return to the children and the children to the fathers. This is our to our forefathers. This is to receive the barakah, the favor of Yahuwah upon the family. Men are supposed to guard and protect their wives, just like in the garden. Adam, he, he didn't guard his wife. And Hawa, Eve, she didn't guard those commands either. And she allowed the enemy to get into their lives, into their marriage. And so the enemy whispered in her ear and she was beguiled. And Adam, he did not guard and protect his wife. So there was a breach. And we've got to restore this breach that's happening in homes to where men understand you are supposed to protect your families spiritually, mentally, physically, and not be, you know, you know, evil or wicked against women. And women are supposed to be evil or wicked against men. There's supposed to be a loving relationship of guarding and protecting these commands so that there is favor of Yahuwah upon the home. And if people are single, it's the same thing. But Messiah is the covering, is the, you know, the husband or the, the, the one you unite with in spirit and truth. So Yah never said we wouldn't have troubles, but if we're firmly built upon his foundation of truth, we'll stand firm in our Amuna belief or faith that he will deliver us from all our troubles. So we know that it says a righteous man will have many, many trials, many struggles, many difficulties, but Yahuwah will deliver him from them all. We just have to remain faithful. Do not budge on that. Do not, do not let anything take Yahuwah's love from being planted in your heart. See, you're supposed to guard loving him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Guard it. Don't let anyone take it because then it makes us waver and doubt his word. And then we believe the enemy, just like Hawa did. So we can't doubt what Yahuwah is doing in this time. It's going to get shaky in this world. It's going, the world is going to bring in the flood of deception and delusion. And we have to guard our minds and our hearts for Yahuwah, for our Messiah, and be filled and sealed with the Ruach HaKodesh and protected. So it's time for the enemy to vacate our property for, you know, we're no longer allowing free residence within us to the enemy. Their time is over. That's what I say. I think Yuhu is saying it too. So, um, again, that Malachi prophecy, the men need to return their hearts to their, to their children and the children to the fathers you know, being the head of the house and being the covering and the protector and the guardian of the way. And women also, if the women have to rise up and someone's got to cover the house, someone's got to apply the blood and someone has to be repenting and forgiving over that house and closing spiritual doors and locking those shut day and night. So the priest did that morning and evening keep those lamps going keep that fire burning that refinement process going continually have that anointing going like the wise virgins continually to be refined in his image and likeness and in proverbs 14 one every wise woman builds her house but a foolish one tears it down with her own hands we have to be really wise in this hour not to allow the enemy to come in and kill, steal, and destroy. And he says to be watching, be watchful. And so, okay, let's go to Hazon, Revelation 7. After this, I saw four messengers standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another messenger ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal 
with the seal of the living Elohim, and he called with a loud voice to the four messengers who had been given power to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of Yahuwah on their foreheads. And I heard the number sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe. So if Yahuwah is calling us back, we are his. If, we, if we're hearing his call and our hearts are being circumcised to walk in his way and understand that these marriage vows, these this covenant agreement that we're supposed to make with our Messiah and that part of him, his blood, is part of what makes us a new creation, that that part of that you know, at Adam gave to Hawa, the rib, is the same thing Mashiach gives to us so that we can actually become a new creation. Our DNA can be healed and, and fixed and we can put off that old man that, you know, become dead to sin, the sinful way and the ego, and become alive under righteousness. So basically he's saying here, he's got to seal his servants and I believe that's happening in this season and you know do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants so when he's finished sealing his servants it looks like we're in for some interesting times that's why you know no one knows the day nor hour and that anything comes upon our houses we don't know what the future holds for any of us all we can do is pray to be counted worthy to escape the things coming. So the important thing is to have a firm foundation, to be completely, you know, trusting in Yahuwah to know he will deliver us in our time of need, no matter what happens so our house will not be plundered. And as long as we're closing those spiritual doors and windows and locking them every day and making sure we're staying, doing our priestly duties, then Yahuwah has protection for his people. So this apocalypse annihilation that the world is talking about, well, the enemy knows his time is short, but Yahuwah's people have been promised eternal life. You know, oh, death, where is thy sting? It's like, it's not the end for Yah's people. We have to understand that and we have to trust in that. All right, so priests had to put on clean garments and wash themselves before entering in. So in the outer court, you know, I actually will go through this in another video where we'll, we'll take a walk through the, the temple or the tabernacle in the wilderness and we'll see how we're supposed to do these offerings. But make sure you're doing pray prayers day and night, it, you know, at least. And then communing all day with Yahuwah, thanking him, praising him. Anytime you think you need to repent, do it. So we offer our lives as a living offering, not animals anymore. And our Messiah is high priest. That's why we have to go through our Messiah in order to get to our Father, to get to Yahuwah, and to be filled with his Ruach HaKodesh, his love. So we cleanse our garments, and this is so important. He is inspecting our garments, and he wants to see fruitful children. So we cleanse our garments by making sure to repent and forgive quickly, applying the blood of Messiah and making sure we're turning away from those things each day when these things are brought to our conscience, to our light. So this is what, when the veil is lifted off of the bride, she can see more clearly. And you, you can see more clearly in the ways you've been walking in lawlessness and the ways that you have you know, you can see more clearly what he wants for us, what he wants for you. So continually put off these things, these dead works and live and bloom for him. So this keeps our garments clean before him when we continually do this process. And it's basically Passover unleavened bread first fruits. If you think about it in the outer court, Passover, so the blood of Messiah, we agree to the commandments. You have to agree to those or you can't get in the house. The covering of the blood of Messiah cleanses us of all unrighteousness. And in that outer court, you know, we put on that where they, they burn the offering. We put on, we put all of our dead works. We lay down our lives as a living offering to cleanse us of all unrighteousness and then offer him our praise. That's that outer court part, but we'll go through that another day. All right, so never let the sun go down on your wrath as it leaves your spiritual doors open for attack. 
Don't make it easy for spiritual forces of darkness to infiltrate your life. Lock those spiritual doors and windows and guard your gates day and night. Or else the thief can walk right in and plunder your house. So this is why he says don't sleep or slumber. You've got to continually make sure you're locking those spiritual doors. And I plan to do some prayers um, to give you all some prayers so you can pray if you don't really know how to pray and do this. But we have to cleanse ourselves before going into the presence of Yah. So we meet with Yahuwah through his son in prayer. And we want to get into the secret place. We want to get into his rest. Everything about that is like the Sabbath and um, tabernacling with him. So, but every day is a, a rehearsal of that every week, every month, every year. It's a continual process. That's why you keep your lamp lit and that's why you have oil. It's a continual refinement process, meeting with him at his appointed times, which are daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. So we get into the secret place every single day and night. This protects you from, you know, attacks. It protects from bad dreams. It protects from sleep paralysis. It protects from all these things that can attack us when we're sleeping or in the daytime too. And it doesn't mean things won't come, but it won't affect you the way you'll be able to stand against it. So submit to you, resist the devil, he'll flee. This is your Noah's Ark of protection for the days ahead. Building your life on the foundation of truth, the Torah in spirit and truth, our Messiah is the chief cornerstone. His, our Messiah's word is the final word. So he has the final say on everything. So build that relationship with Yahuwah and his son and stay covered in the pitch, kafar, atoning blood of Messiah, just like Noah did in his day. We have to do that. If men aren't guarding their homes, if women aren't stepping up and praying over their husbands and children, if single people aren't praying to be protected and to be, you know, covered by Messiah, whatever it is, whatever stage of life, you cannot leave these spiritual windows and doors open. It has to be closed in the days ahead. It's going to be rough. So we repent and forgive quickly. Stay clean before him because he's inspecting our garments. Remember who gets into the wedding feast? Those who have clean garments on. So it's the most important life insurance policy one could ever have for the days ahead. If they don't have this life insurance policy, it's going to be rough. So a wise man will build his house upon the rock of truth and wise virgins will keep their lamps, lamps lit, have plenty of oil, stay awake, watching always, making sure your house is always covered, protected, doors and windows locked, spiritually, physically, mentally. All right. So, um, I've got some sample prayers here and I might just write these up for you. I might just type these up for you and put them in the description box. But um, so you see what's so important for the days ahead is that things are being revealed to us. Yahuwah will protect his children. And let's look at a little bit of Malachi 3 and then we'll end this video for, for now. Okay. So you have said it is futile to serve Yahuwah. What have we gained by keeping his requirements and walking mournfully before Yahuwah of hosts? So now we call the arrogant favored? Not only do evildoers prosper, they even test Yahuwah and escape. At that time, those who feared Yahuwah spoke with one another, and Yahuwah listened and heard them. So a scroll of remembrance was written before him regarding those who feared Yahuwah and honored his name. Remember, we have to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. How do we do that? It's the DNA. And because we have a part of our Messiah's DNA in us, he is the vine. So continuing, they will be mine, says Yehovah of hosts, on the day when I prepare my treasured possession. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve Yahuwah and those who do not. This is so important. I don't know how to stress it enough. Um, 
but I'll keep I'll keep bringing videos out to share these things and we'll just keep walking through it and um, this is this is your life insurance policy right here so I hope you have a super wonderful day and um, I will catch you on the next one y'all willing <laughs>